presents. Okay, thank you for inviting me for this presentation to present our research group. Uh, and I'm going to talk about the integration of hyperledger fabric and ROS2 for distributed robotic systems and some results of our real world experiments in our lab. Um, so for my presentation, uh, I'm, I will start with a small introduction about our research team, TIERS, in University of Turku. Then I will give an introduction of Hyperledger Fabric and ROS2, and then go over some real world ex examples and scenarios, um, and then finally talk about the results that we had. Turku stands for Turku Intelligence Embedded and Robotic Systems, and our research verticals consists of edge intelligence, resilience, autonomy, distributed systems like SWARM intelligence and collaborative uh, autonomy, and so on. And um, uh, in this presentation, we will explore how the blockchain technology can be integrated with advanced robotics to enable trustable data sharing and robot control. And we will examine real world examples and scenarios of scalable, collaborative and reliable robotic systems and discover their potential in various industries. Uh, industries. Um, I know you know, but I'm gonna give uh, some introduction about the fabric also. As you know, Hyperledger is one of the biggest platforms in the permission blockchains, and it is an open source project based on Linux Foundation. It provides projects and frameworks to businesses and developers to build the blockchain networks and applications. And it aims to um, ease the collaboration between developers, enterprises, and businesses in the field of distributed ledger technology. And as the uh, advantages, it, it offers a robust set of features that makes it suitable for integrating blockchain into distributed robotic systems. Its permission network architecture ensures that only authorized um, participants can join the network and access shared data. And the modular architecture allows for flexibility and customization, enabling developers to tailor the blockchain network to their specific requirements. And it supports smart contracts, enabling the execution of automated businesses logic on the blockchain. But if I want to talk about the robotic side, I'm going to talk about the ROS, which is basically, it's gonna be the main uh, talk today. And what is ROS? Before the introduction of ROS, robotics development was often lacked a standardized framework. Developers had to build their own custom solutions for communication, coordination, and integration of robots um, components, leading lots of uh, efforts and co collaboration among researchers and sharing the codes and resources uh, were challenging. The absence of a unified platform made it harder to prototype, test, and deploy robot applications, increasing uh, development's time and complexity. ROS revolutionized robotics by providing a common framework, fostering collaboration, promoting modularity, and simplifying the development process, accelerating the advancement in the field. Uh, first, ROS developed. ROS is also known as ROS1. It was initially released in 2007 and has since become widely adopted in the robotics community. It provides flexible and modular framework for developing robot software. It allows um, developers to break down complex robot applications into smaller reusable components called packages, promoting code modularity and reusability. It uses publish and subscribe messages system, which we call them topic, to enable communication between different components of the robotic systems. And uh, it was primarily supports, uh, it primarily supports single host systems and is mainly used for uh, research and prototyping um, applications. It has a large ecosystem of packages and tools developed by the community 
uh, making it easier to leverage existing functionality and collaborate with others. Uh, if you see, I put an example of how Rust One works and how robots can communicate with each other. In the presence of Rust Master, we can have publisher node and subscriber node when the, uh, where the data can be transferred through the Rust topic so that multiple robots can easily communicate with each other and transfer the message between each other. Here you can see the uh, Rust communication where, for example, this is an example, camera can be as a node which publishes its data on a topic. Um, we can also have a node for processing the camera data and one node for, for example, recording the data. And the uh, processing node can subscribe to the camera topic and publish it and publish its processing results on another topic. And on the other hand, the recording node can subscribe to these topics and record, record all the data received from the camera node and processing node. Uh, but ROS1 has also limitations. It doesn't provide native support for real-time systems or safety critical applications. A uh, package developed for one specific ROS distribution may not always be fully compatible or work seamlessly with other ROS distributions. So sometimes we need to change the whole uh, codes and mm, mm, so whole codes for other distributions. Uh, it was primarily written in Python 2, which has become an outdated version of the language. And also it was designed for research and development purposes rather than for deployment in security sensitive and uh, security sensitive environments. Uh, it lacks of native support for external networking and distributed system. It was designed for single host systems and communication between ROS nodes was primarily intended for local machine communication. With the presence of these limitations, ROS2 emerged. ROS2 is a modern framework for building robot applications. It improves open ROS1 with uh, enhanced performance, scalability, and support for real-time and safety critical systems. Uh, ROS2 promotes code reusability, collaboration, and interoperability, um, making it easier to develop advanced robot applications. With the distributed architecture of ROS2, it enables communication across multiple machines, and its modular R R R uh, structure separates components into nodes for improved flexibility. And uh, message-based communication in ROS2 uses a publish-subscribe model, model uh, for data exchange. With this architecture, ROS2 provides a powerful platform for building advanced robot applications. Here, uh, if you can see, uh, basically topics in ROS2 are transferred in this way where we can have multiple publisher and subscriber nodes. The biggest change that came with ROS2 was the selection of the DDS middleware for the communication layer, which has strength, strengths the communication between robot components with its decentralized uh, public uh, subscribe architecture, and we don't need any ROS master in ROS2. Uh, ROS includes um, mature open source libraries to be used for navigation, control, motion planning, vision, and simulation purposes. The 3D visualization tool like Arvis, named Arvis, and the simulation tool Gazebo are seen as useful tools for robot developers. And also apart from this, OpenCV library is a library used for detection purposes in ROS2, which we have also used in our scenarios. Uh, now let's move to some of the real world examples and some scenarios that we had um, regarding integrating ROS2 and Fabric. Over the past two years, we've been working on integrating Fabric with ROS2 uh, using both Go language, Golang, and more recently with Node.js. For ROS2, both Go and Node.js client libraries are community backed as the main supported languages are Python and C++. Um, so if I want to talk about our first scenario, real-world example, uh, a Hyperledger Fabric DLT network is interfaced with uh, ROS2 for managing autonomous robotic fleets. Uh, in this scenario, we introduce the framework for integrating ROS2 with the Hyperledger Fabric for distributed robotic systems. 
and also analyze the impact of integrating fabric and robotic systems with a performance and a scalability study and experimental proof of the proposed framework for an inventory management application with ground and aerial robots. Um, here, uh, this uh, diagram shows the um, framework architecture and key components. The fabric network is hosted in a cloud with a Go-based web interface for visualizing the raster data stored in the different channels and a command interface for inputting user uh, instructions. Fabric is hosted by a set of, uh, set of uh, organizations, contain peers, um, certificate authorities to verify their membership in the network. Existing of the private data channel is one of the key components differentiating Fabric from other blockchain solutions here. In this framework, robots are members of the Fabric network and also shared roster network. You can also see the important applications of smart contracts for industrial robots, like Ledger can be used to record sensor data, roster data type, or so on. And web application can be used for visualizing data and sending comments to the robots and so on. Uh, if I want to give an algorithm example of an application for such purpose, you can see this algorithm. Another benefit of DLT, in addition to the immutable and auditable records, as you, as you know, uh, in the built-in security features and identity management, which can be exploited, for instance, in, uh, uh, in interfaces for users for control, either individual robots or fleets. Any collaborative decision-making process can be implemented through smart contracts, which we are basically using to ensure that all robots obtain the same result. This is applicable to role allocation or um, resource distributed problems. Um, for the experimental um, part of our scenario, you can see the implementation diagram of the different software modules running in different nodes here. We have used the ground robots, the AI dashboard platform, and the UAV, uh, UAV uh, X500 quadrotor frame embedded with um, PixHawk 5X flight controller running with the PX4 framework. For this experiment, we used six OptiTrack cameras for navigation of the robots in our arena. Robots were running Rosnoetic under Ubuntu 8T, uh, but uh, the localization and object detection were all running in ROS2 proxy. And um, we have used ROS1 bridge to forward data from Noetic to Foxy from ROS1 to ROS2. Fabric applications were running onboard the robots, but connect to the peers running on the separate computer in the network with the same Intel Core i7 processor. And for the object detections, we used Yolox, and Fabric has been brought up for secure data management and robot control. We have we used two smart contracts, one for storing the pass tracking and one for storing the location of the detected objects in the asset. And for each robot, one application with different functions for controlling the assets has been used. And we have used a series of shells set up in the room of 40 square meter containing different objects from the COCO data set uh, categories. And um, for, the, for this scenario, we uh, have uh, uh, checked and analyzed the CPU and memory usage during the experiment and to see if using and integrating fabric in our system would affect the system or not. And we have also checked the Yolox, Yolox usage. And um, the, the CPU usage is in blue and memory is in pink. So as you can see, having Fabric for secure data sharing is negligible. And so the proposed framework can be adopted in a wide variety of robotics platforms. And we have also measured the latency of the data storing in the blockchain when the application nodes is running in the robots connected to the computer is running in the order and the peers nodes via, via Wi-Fi. And here you can see the distribution of the latency of the main four settings um, where data from 15 seconds is accumulated and over uh, 200 hertz of ROS2 data being pushed into the smart contracts. We were trying to uh, try this with different batch timeout and maximum message to see the difference uh, latencies also. Mm. As a second scenario, 
uh, you can see here the blockchain is used for high-level mission commands, predefined robot paths, for triggering multi-robot cooperative actions based on chain-recorded uh, robot states like docking and um, landing the drone, and switching operation modes for active and deactivating the ultra-wideband beacons. Uh, detected objects are also stored in the blockchain. With the ultra wideband, I need to give an introduction about that also. What is it? Ultra wideband technology um, merged as a robust um, solution for localization in robotic systems, especially for GNSS denied environments. It can provide centimeter levels of accuracy at low cost. It also has the advantage that it doesn't depend on environmental conditions such as light or there is any dust, like what would happen with the cameras and lighters. It is also more accurate than Wi-Fi or Bluetooth and less uh, prone to inter uh, interferences. Um, here uh, you can see uh, ultra wideband is a radio frequency technology that is used for indoor localization. Since these devices are more affordable than other indoor localization solutions like uh, OptiTrack cameras that we used for our previous scenario, is uh, attracting increasing attention. Anchors and tags are two types of nodes used in ultra wideband localization to obtain the positions of the tags. In most anchor based scenarios, the locations of the anchors must be known. So if we um, get coordinations of the fixed anchors nodes are assumed to be known by the system for, for our calculation. And if we have enough fixed nodes and also the location of that, coordination of them, depending on the ranging method implement, implemented, the tags can be estimated their distance from each anchor and calculate their own location using different algorithms like TOF, time of flights, which in our case is that. So for this scenario, um, we uh, we want we plan to uh, we plan the pass for our teledrome and dashgo to inspect a warehouse like environment and store the information they get uh, about the objects uh, store them in the blockchain we we utilize the fabric smart contract for logging historical data and collaborative uh, collaborative decision making for um, drone uh, landing and we also utilize ultra wideband localization for following predefined trajectory while the docking smart contract triggers the activation of the anchors in the ground robot for more accurate re relative localization while docking um, the experimental platform of this scenario is consists of the commercially um, uh, tello mav and uh, uh, ground robot as you can see, the drone is equipped with the ultra wideband module for localization. <clears throat> we also utilize the drone camera for object detections with the camera feed being available through a web socket connected to a controller computer. The ground robot, EAI Dashco, is equipped with the uh, sensors and camera and also VLSense T265 VLSense camera for the uh, ego motion estimation. For this experiment, we have four ultra wideband nodes, uh, modules with custom firmware. They have been deployed for robot localization. And also we have five extra ultra wideband nodes, which has been used on the Dashco platform for more accurate docking of the Tello. For this experiment, like, like the previous one, we have the objects from the COCO dataset categories and the, the arena is 40 square meter room. So on the software side, the Dashco robot runs Ross Melodic under Ubuntu 20 and the main driver. Localization and object detections are all running in ROS2. The fabric application running on board the robots are connected to the peers running on a separate computer and network. Uh, to forward the data, uh, we have used bridge like the previous one and to obtain the camera image of the Dashco at a frequency of 30 Hertz. Even though they are forwarded to the object detectors at five hertz, the USB cam package has been used, which is available in both Melodic and Foxy. To implement the different parts of the system, we have used Go, pro Go programming language, well, and uh, whenever possible, has been used uh, to increase the potential for integration between the different parts of the system. 
Uh, we have five smart contracts uh, implemented in the system, two for storing each robot's past history, and two for storing the locations of detected objects by each robot, and one for updating the battery level of the Tello and also landing decision-making for both robots. Uh, one application containing different functions such as creating assets and read and updating and changing the assets has been used for each robot also. Uh, this figure shows the trajectories of the robots during the experiment and towards the mission ends, as it can be seen, after more than three minutes, the positions converge when the telodrome lands on the dash goal. And the, the bottom figures show the distribution in the uh, time of the object detection detected by the Tello and Dashko. And we have also analyzed the memory and CPU usage by Fabric and uh, Yolox, and we got the same result, which uh, usage of Fabric is negligible. And we have also analyzed the latency. Um, and uh, this figure shows the latency distribution of five smart contracts, where we had over 200 hertz of ROSTU data stored in the average. And uh, if I want to show it so it be more visualized for you, so the idea is that um, both Tello and Dash will start to explore the place. And whenever uh, they're exploring, whenever the uh, battery level of the uh, Tello goes uh, beyond the threshold, then the docking uh, command is sent to Dashko and uh, Tello. So they both go to the landing position. And while they both arrive to that position, the anchors on the Dashko activates. Uh, so the Tello used those ultra wideband anchors on the dashboard to land, so we have more an accurate landing. Um, so this is another scenario with the same idea, but using the Fabric Smart Contract uh, as running the role allocation to determine the corresponding roles for each node shown here. Uh, we have four ultra wideband localization of the system. We use both time of flights and TDOA to minimize the disadvantages. And the Hyperledger fabric aims to secure data management and robot control. The implementation has two smart contracts one contract to store the past history of six mobile ultra wideband nodes, and the second one that implements the role allocation algorithm and saves the roles in the network. So the core idea for the role allocation is to keep the um, to keep the passive nodes toward the centroid of the system inside the convex envelope, and the active nodes towards the outside. So the idea is that I, I don't want to go inside this, but using the smart contract for role allocation was basically for this idea. And for the hardware, we, uh, we utilize the uh, six Jetson nanos. Uh, Jetsons, um, sorry, Jetsons uh, with Jetson nano modules, uh, and we have ultra wide band deca wave developed modules with custom firmware to enable time of flight and TDOA and transmission scheduling. And uh, the backbone wireless network is also implemented. And we have also used six open track cameras for motion capture system where used uh, and one global controller with Try seven processor for robot co co coordination and to run the localization algorithm. Uh, on the software side, um, the Jetsons are running Ross Melodic in Ubuntu 18, one computer to serve as a coordinator and run localization. Also, a Ross 1 to Ross 2 bridge is implemented uh, before. And ROS1 for Jetson and ROS2 for the Hyperledger Fabric application. And the role allocation algorithm is uh, implemented in three different ways. Uh, one way was in ROS1 Python node. One way was in ROS2 with RCL Go, Golang. And another way was in Fabric Smart Contract in Golang. With the aim of comparing the performances later on, all three methods are implemented with a frequency of 5 Hertz. And after comparing these different methods, uh, we uh, analyze the impact of the integrating Hyperledger 
uh, smart contracts for the role allocation also, and uh, as a distributed and cooperative decision-making process. Um, uh, ROS2 Go implementation is naturally faster than the interpreted ROS1 Python node. However, both implementations are fast enough for meeting the frequency defined for the role allocation. The addition of Hyperledger Fabric interface to the baseline Go implementation increments its latency. However, it still remains fast enough to meet the five hertz requirement for the system. Uh, and as the last scenario that we have recently worked on, um, a Hyperledger Fabric uh, network bridges robots with the remote teleoperation application. The fabric network is able to transport data with low latencies in the range of hundreds of milliseconds, real-time data stream can be confirmed through hashes in the blockchain. The fabric network allows for control access management and auditability of the teleoperation. So we proposed a um, fabric as bridging the interfacing ROS2 system. Uh, so using the fabric as a bridge uh, with ROS2 system uh, through an event-based design and parameterizable uh, data transport setting. And also we introduced a design implementation and evaluation of a proof, proof of concept for near real-time robot teleoperation uh, through fabric from single to multi-robot systems. Um, Comparing to previous experiments and scenarios, this experiment is toward near real-time remote teleoperation and control. It's more lightweight, uh, computationally efficient fabric was to bridge. Uh, and um, we ported from Go to Node.js. So uh, despite uh, Go, which required uh, predefined bus to message, Node.js doesn't require this. And it's in general, it's um, a more generalizable and performance fabric plus to interface. Um, so this is a system architecture overview and illustration of the ROS2 and Fabric blockchain interfaces. The Fabric network effectively acts as a data transport layer between individual ROS2 subsystems. A Fabric network is optimized for cross-organizational data exchange and secure uh, temper-proof data storage and sharing. Event-driven architecture is the key feature of this paper. Um, research uh, where ROS2 fabric applications execute callbacks from both the ROS and the fabric networks uh, they are interfacing. Uh, ROS2 event, uh, events occur whenever, for example, new message arrives uh, or new messages are published uh, to a given uh, topic. This approach uh, significantly reduces data transport latency at high network cap capacity. And as a hardware setup, we utilize uh, for this experiment, we utilize the DJI Teledrone and also the mockup system in the area of eight to nine to five meters uh, for the localization. So here you can see the uh, software architecture. The system uh, was implemented based on the ROS2 Galactic Framework on Ubuntu 20. And robot control and localization were running in host one. Data from OptiTrack mockup system camera is received with the uh, VRPN client ROS node and used for accurate position and attitude of the robot. And the teleoperation application and the basic motion controller were running in host two. Two fabric applications are then deployed in each host to interface with the ROS2 system. And the latency is also calculated since uh, odometry message is generated in one host until the matching velocity control message for controlling the tele to go to the predefined pass arrives from another host, including bo both the physical network and the fabric network latencies, which you can see is more or less around uh, 0 0.5 milliseconds. And um, as a conclusion, we leverage blockchain technology for multi-robot systems in various 
industrial applications for purpose of identity management, data sharing, uh, security, monitoring, and multi-robot inventory management and consensus. Uh, we showed that using proper ledger fabric and robotic systems provides a significant amount of built-in security while having a minimal impact on the utilization of the computational resources. And in overall, the integration of Hyperledger Fabric and ROS2 empowers distributed robotic systems with enhanced capabilities and trustworthiness. And um, of course, we are a team and I haven't worked alone and I couldn't do this without the help of my friends and colleagues. And so thank you for uh, your patience and listening. Thank you so much. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Salma. Yeah. Um, and participants can ask questions directly or, or they can write in the chat. So we have some questions, Salma, in the chat. So uh, first question is uh, about uh, LIDAR and uh, machine vis vision can be used to uh, complement each other. Is there any focus with uh, ROS to R&D to merge uh, the two technologies? Um... Basically, I haven't worked on LIDARs and machine vision, so uh, maybe I, I cannot help you with that, but uh, we, we, I haven't worked with that, so I cannot say exactly, but I can search and I can, I can reply you later. I can ask because some of our colleagues are specifically working on LIDARs and we have other colleagues working on machine, vision, machine learning and vision aside, so I can ask them and later answer your question. Thanks, uh, thanks, Alma. And, and uh, is yeah. there mesh technology used for Rostu solutions? Yeah. No, we haven't used mesh, mesh technology. Mm -hmm. No, we haven't used for our used for our Rostu solutions. Uh, Salma, you mentioned one uh, one thing like uh, identity management. So how you you how you are using this uh, with respect to blockchain? So the, the basic idea is that all the robots that are in the system are defined before. So we know the identity of them. So they are kind of members of the network so that other robots do not come and uh, uh, be a, like Byzantine the system. And currently we are working on the scenario now that we have a Byzantine robot. So we are um, more focusing on the identity management part. And we are using the ABAC smart contract of the fabric, which is going to be uh, published later. So you can see the result. But um, basically the idea until now was that. So we all the identities were defined in the system. Mm -hmm. And uh, one more question on uh, ultra wideband. So, what are the use cases? Other use cases, like uh, what what kind of devices we can connect with this? And if you can tell us the frequency as well, that's really helpful. Uh, basically, uh, my colleague is working uh, on ultra wideband, but uh, the main usage that I have used for all these experiments is only for the localization and. Um, um, it is the thing is most mostly we use mockup systems, but as ultra wideband are uh, more affordable and easy to use, we have I have used them in some of my experiments to see the results also. But for the other systems, they can be I think they can be portable. They can be connected to the uh, different robots also. But if you have any questions about ultra wideband, you can connect my colleague Paula Torico Moron. So she is the uh, a specialized person for uh, the ultra wide band part. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And uh, about the standards, so do we have standards on this right now, or uh, which which is the standard body for this particularly? What uh, I didn't get you for ROS that. two. Yes. So is there any standard body uh, who made all these standards, or is it uh, what is it like? Is it open source or? It, yeah, it is open source. So we have currently we are uh, working with uh, uh, ROS2 Galactic. So it's easily used and open source and it can be used for different robots and it's easy to use. Also, we have all the packages and things in our GitHub repository if you want, for example, the ones that the smart contracts and applications that we have used for our scenarios 
are, um, I can send you later uh, in the GitHub so it can be used and compatible to other robots and you can you can easily use them. Yeah, that will be great if you can share yeah. the GitHub of them, yeah. Yeah, of course, I, I can add the GitHub repository in this slide and then later when I send the slides, you when you're sharing that, you can mm -hmm. um, go and check. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Alma. Um, uh, David, could you check uh, any questions from YouTube? Uh, I've got I've got a yeah. got a few comments to say. So thanks, Salma, for for accepting your invitation and uh, for a great presentation. You've done quite a good bit of work uh, here, and it's and it seems that you haven't really stopped at trying to integrate the the, the fabric with ROS two. So you've actually done some analytics work on on kind of how uh, Hyperledger and Fabric would would actually work in these environments. Yeah. Uh, so the and I and I particularly like the way that you've used smart contracts. It seems to kind of support the event driven or or enable the event driven uh, kind of nature of of the work. So you're you're I think triggering these smart contracts based on the events that happen uh, on the on the ROS two side, right? So that that's probably would save lots of resources in smart contracts just being triggered when they are needed, rather than constantly being uh, kind of monitoring the system, right? Uh, so the the part with the smart contracts, which is kind of the the, the most interesting part for us in this group, uh, kind of trying to see how people are using uh, fabric and and chain codes and so on. So one, one of them particularly was interesting to me, uh, which was the decision-making contract based on the battery level, I think. Yeah. You, if you can go back to that to the slide, because so some of the your smart contracts are, are, are essentially yeah, about writing uh, kind of data on the ledger, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, but this particular one was about actually kind of uh, making a decision uh, so one thing that I that I'm a bit confused about is that so so this is a decision making that is supposed to be taken in a distributed manner. Right? So there should be some essentially entities that don't trust each other, right? And now they want to make this decision together without trusting each other. So can you just elaborate on that scenario? Like why wouldn't they trust each other, and what are these parties? Uh, why wouldn't they trust each other? yeah so the thing is we are okay for example here dashboard and teller are not connected to each other they are mm -hmm. not aware of each other's mm, condition so uh, smart contracts only checks the topics that is getting from the cello which is the battery and whenever it gets the topic that the battery is lower than a specific it just published the topic so the ROS, uh, so on the other side in the dash code, which the, we have the smart contract also, when it gets that topic, it's go to that task, I mean, goes to that position. So basically they, they do not, both of them are from mm, mm, parts of the network, but they are not aware of each other. They just get like publish and subscribe. They just subscribe to the topics and publish and with this, they just communicate. I don't know if I get your question right or not. Or if... yeah, yeah, no, no. So yeah, maybe, maybe I'm, I I misunderstood the the point here. So, uh, so what you're saying is that there is a server server and and kind of uh, node relationship here. So the the idea here is not get, achieving trust using the smart contract. It's more about trust just data transparency. Side. Yeah, trust side is for trusting the robot because, you know, for example, we are, our scenario was using them in the warehouse environment. If mm -hmm. another robot tried to make uh, uh, faults in the system or try to, uh, for example, uh, get the drone for landing or do some uh, faults in the system, that, that robot cannot see any topic because those topics are going through the blockchain. So it's not available outside that. 
So only these two can, can communicate and can see the topics. Another thing which, which, which we are currently using also is that there is another thing like beside ROS2, SROS has been uh, developed recently, which is Secure ROS2. Uh, with that case, if we implemented that also, uh, each, um, the, each robot would have some keys. And with those keys, none of, nothing out of those robots would see those topics. So basically, it's like that. But we have we, we are using it currently. We, we are trying to use the SROS tool with the ABAC smart contract this time for this identity and trust things. But basically, yeah. yeah. Okay. So now, so if you want to talk about the kind of the, the setup of fabric that you have, right? Mm -hmm. So do you have multiple organizations? Do you have like so because these so these smart contracts are essential. Probably you don't need a very complicated uh, endorsement policy for them, right? Mm -hmm. So, do 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 everyone in the network have to endorse these uh, smart contracts, or uh, only the robots, which are which are uh, which are going to involve in this? So mm -hmm. nothing else. This smart contract is only. And by these robots, so no, no one else. I mean, you can, if you're in a system, you can see the topics, but you don't need to endorse the smart contract. Right. So I can, I can see like in in more sophisticated scenarios, like let's say in a factory of future uh, scenario where you might have, uh, let's say, machines from different. Uh, let's say sections of the factory trying to work together so, so maybe in, in those cases you might you might need a kind of smart contracts that are uh that are essentially kind of bring in more, more of that you know collaborative decision making uh kind of side of things to the smart contract uh because then then you have the problem of trust right so because now you have external uh sources of 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 trust and and how do you how do you trust people coming in and out i know that you you're planning to use smart contracts for identity management as well but what i'm what i'm talking about here is more or more from the view of more complicated decisions that have to be taken and more people have to give an input so here your input comes directly from the drone and the drone makes a decision based on its battery level yeah. right uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there's there's quite a bit of things to be to be done here in in more complicated scenarios. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we are yeah. just trying starting this. I mean, I'm 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 I I recently I I just started uh, working on fabric from a PhD. I mean, it's been one year and a half. So I'm just trying. Right, yeah. yeah. Integrate. I I was not uh, specialized in. Yeah. No yeah, and, and, and one last uh, question. So if you go to the uh, latency uh, figures that you had, mm -hmm. uh, well, actually, like both latency and, and CPU utilization. Yeah. So what is the transaction throughput here? What numbers are you looking at? Uh, the 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 troop, the thing is, we had another analysis also, but I didn't put because the slides were too much. Mm -hmm. For checking the throughputs to see that if changing, um, having different throughputs um, would affect this or not, we had some um, um, test um, tests with different batch timeouts and maximum message. But beside that, uh, we got uh, the frequency uh, of, I mean, with the frequency of around 50 hertz was the thing that we got the optimal one. But we had some stress tests to check the different frequencies and different um, utilization, but I didn't put it here. So with that optimal frequency that we got, we got the minimum um, uh, resources utilization. Yeah, but sometimes that's really out of your control, right? Because yeah, the number obviously. of transactions that come through your uh, your 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 fabric will depend on 
the number of drones you have. Uh, so I, I assume these are all uh, scenarios with one drone and one dash, right? Yeah, only for our case. I mean, okay. it's not. Yeah. 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 So I mean, obviously, for this case, this is a this is a good analysis. But uh, I wonder if this would still uh, apply if you have, let's say, hundred machines uh, that are quite latency sensitive. So you want to process their transactions very, very quickly. Sure. Uh, so yeah, what I'm saying is that this might not be very generalizable uh, because, like, I I did lots of. Uh, <clears throat> Kind of these kind of uh, analysis on on whether if uh, my fabric network is going to kind of be able to meet the, the the latency requirement that I have in my use cases, right? Which is telecom use cases, and they're very latency sensitive. And once you reach kind of a, a couple of hundred transactions uh, per second, it, things start to to kind of uh, change quite rapidly with the uh, with the latency and CPU usage as well. Yeah, also when after uh, recently, because with our new scenario that we are using, the one problem is that as it is accumulating the data after, if if we leave the data to be transferred as it is, uh, sometimes the latency increases even even though it need for example after three minutes or four minutes. After accumulating the message, it starts to go. Yeah, up. yeah. And there's also so one thing is actually like just writing things on the blocks, and yeah. the other thing is that if you have like a uh, kind of a more sophisticated uh, smart contracts that are making a decision based on a particular algorithm, then if you have to wait for all the nodes to endorse your uh, your 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 smart contracts outcome then you end up sometimes uh, waiting for quite a while to for everyone to endorse exactly. the uh, smart contract and so on. So yeah, yeah, very, like lots of space for you to to uh, work on if if you want to continue working with Type of Ledger. So, but, yeah, of course, there are lots of parameters that we have to take into account. And if you want to, if we want to generalize it, of course, we have to use more than two robots. We have to take into account lots of things. Of course, you're right. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Any questions? I have a question. I have a question. So, um, very wonderful presentation. Thank you so much for your time. Um, my question is, are you able to bring the electromagnetic computation into fabric? Um. I, for now, I have to search for that because I don't know if I can, I, I don't know, I have to like the frequent, that. Like the frequencies, are you able to bring like the RF and all of these things into, yes. into fabric? Yeah, that's why I'm saying, um, I mean, like checking them or? Well, anything, I mean, it's, just, I mean, you're on the, you're on the, you're on the cutting edge. Yeah. So I'm just wondering if you were able to bring electromagnetic computation into fabric. Uh, actually, we haven't tried. No, so I can I cannot give you an answer. I, I, we haven't tried. So maybe if we try, we, I can give you the. Okay. Um, All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, anyone else? Any questions? If not, uh, so thank you. Thank you, Salma, for accepting our invitation and uh, this very good presentation. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining today. And thank, um, you, yeah. thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.